uh, it will be quite different to what we did before. So I will be looking at the metrics. And that will be the name I'll give to that matrix. In fact, these sort of computations, they appear very often in the sec, I mean, those of you who will start doing the uh, vector calculus, uh, for instance, uh, finding the volumes of different bodies in, um, in n-dimensional spaces, you will see that these sort of techniques are very often needed there. Because in vector calculus, determinants, you know, we know we all know the determinants originally we just they came from the for instance if you remember last time we discussed with the Kramer's rule and that rule effectively told us that determinants are so good for solving of system linear equations the other thing you will learn one day probably next year is that determinants are also very good when you compute volumes of different different solids in three dimensional or even in higher dimensional spaces because determinant determinants they effectively measure what happens when you uh, how badly the space change its dimensions when you change the uh, system of coordinates in this, in this space. And that's the one which we found there. Look at this. It's a rather big one. <clears throat> in fact, it, you see, it is a size of n plus 1 times n plus 1. So in one of the papers we were writing with my colleagues, we, we needed to find the volume of, a, of some solid in n plus 1 dimensional space, and this solid was... And that's a determinant which appeared there. It's quite a big one. It has lots of zeros. It has some structure, in fact. You see the first column, or the first row, say, it has the feeling like this. Uh, the first element is A, and the rest of the row is column with negative Ys. All of, these, all of the parameters are just numbers. The first column is filled with some numbers like, like this. You have on, a di on diagonal, you have Ys, and the zero elsewhere and zero elsewhere. Uh, just to give you the impression, I also gave you the, I just here I put uh, the size three or size four version of this matrix. You see, when you take your n equal three, your matrix will be size four times four. That's the version of that matrix. So you see on diagonal, you have the elements like so. First row, first column, the rest is zero. The rest are zeros. So my job is to find the value for the determinant of this matrix. So the value of this J sub n sequence. Normally, normally, when you have something like this, you should hope to discover some recurrence relation. So the connection between the determinant of one size to the determinants of a smaller size. And on that search, when you search for this recurrence relation, minor decomposition and row reduction as your main tools. Here, here, look, uh, let me just see what we did here. Here, oops, too many crosses. I'm going to use the row reduction with respect to the last column. Normally, I start from the top to bottom, but this time I'll start from the bottom to top, which doesn't change anything because we can sum the terms any way we wish. I'll st I want to start this way because if I use my row reduction or column reduction with the last column, and if I fix my cross on this element, the remaining minor, the remaining minor, it will be the same matrix but one size lower, and that's my basis. That's that's the basis for my recurrence relation. So if I do my row reduction with the last column, if I use my recurrence relation, the term which corresponds to this position of a cross here it is, the element y times the corresponding minor, which is the same matrix but size, but size n take one. Sign alterations, they give me plus because the position of this element, it's the n plus 1 row, n plus 1 column. So it's a, when, you sum, when you add them, it is even number. That's why you have plus. Now, I have to put my cross now in the second position, second on zero position, like this. If I do that, there will be a minor of this type. There will be a minor of this type, and I will be evaluating that minor. But I'm not going to write this, I mean, I'm not going to put this in writing because it's too much to write, too much to copy. Instead, I will, do the, I will do my computations right here on the same matrix. Look, just imagine now we're looking at this minor alone. This, we will factor this minor by negative 1, or negative y. There will be a sign alteration factor, which is, what is it? It's a, it's a row number 1. It's a column n plus 1. So the sign alteration will be 
negative 1 to the power n plus 2, or n, because 2 doesn't change the sign. Keep this in mind. So it will be negative y plus sign alteration, negative 1 to the power n. But let's just focus on the minor, this minor. For this minor, I will use another column or row decomposition. And this time, the choice of this column or row is immediate, because the last row for this minor has only one non-zero element. So I'm going to take my second cross, and I'm going to you drag it across the last row of my minor, but all of the terms which will appear there will be zero except for the very first one, this one. So if you're following what I'm, if, you, if you're imagining what's going to happen with my second term next to this one, it's going to be negative y plus the sine alteration plus this minor, this minor, this one. But then in this minor, we do another row decomposition. So it will be Sn, sine alteration fact factor, another sine alteration factor. We will compute it in a second. And then even smaller minor. At this point, you will say, when we're going to stop? Right now, we're going to stop. Because this minor, if you look closely at this minor, it is a diagonal matrix. And for that matrix, the determinant is just the products of the elements on the diagonal. We have all y's. How many of them we have? We have all the uh, complete sizes n plus 1. We crossed out two dimensions, so it is n take 1. So it's a y to the power n take y. And here's the computation finished. Look at this. The last term which I'm going to put here, here it is. Sign alterations for this minor, for this cross, like I said, negative 1 n plus 1. Negative y factor for this element where my cross, first cross is focused. Then goes sign alterations for this cross, because this element sits in the first column. And which row? Well, originally it was n plus 1 row, but because now we'll be thinking of a smaller minor, it's the row number n. That's why it's n plus 1. Then the element where my cross is focused, and then the determinant of the, the smallest minor, which is the y to the power n take 1. And here's my complete recurrence relation. Now we can just simplify everything. Well, in fact, this one simplifies rather easily because, well, that's how it's, that's how it's going to be. The first term is, uh, is the same, but this one, uh, all of the sign alterations, they just cancel each other. And uh, altogether, we end up with something like this. If you now unravel your recurrence relation all the way to the very first Determinant. So if you start doing something like this, you replace your j and take 1 with another instance of the recurrence relation. Here's my replacement. So I replace my j and take 1 with a similar recurrence relation, but for the n take 1. Uh, after the expansion, after the expansion, you will come up with, the, with something like this. Then you, if you replace the j and take 2 with another copy of the recurrence relation, eventually I claim the whole thing will be looking like this. There will be the determinant of size, well, when n equals 0, meaning that the size will be 1 times 1. That's the power of y, and that's the right-hand side. You can easily see that this is true, for instance, by observing well, one of the observations which support that this is, will be the final destination of your unraveling process is that, for instance, you see the power of this y plus the index of this j, they always return 1. It was here, power 1, and take 1. If you add them, it is n. And it is same, the same story is here. When you add n and when you add 0, it will be n again. It's one of the signs that the, when I was doing my, when I, when I unraveled, unraveled my occurrence relation, I did everything correct correctly. And that's the value for that detail. Well, in the, in the paper, in that research we did together, actually, we, we just did, we, did, we didn't need to find the, this value itself. The actual matrix which we need to find was this matrix, where this A parameter was replaced with, with a choice like this. So if you replace this A with a choice like this, your D will be just Y to the power N. Because the matrix of size 0, so matrix of size, I mean, matrix of size 1 for n equals 0, it is just one element, A, alone. 
like I said, I'll check the yellow book. I'm not sure if they have the questions of this level yet, because it's a little bit difficult question, I mean, for, for the people of your experience with the determinants. But in principle, the solution which I presented doesn't represent any, I mean, the understanding of the solution doesn't represent any difficulties. It's just finding such solution, it's a challenge. But I hope one day you will be able to do something like this as well. Any questions? <laughs>